Hello, my name is Brian Vaudouin, one of the directors of youth ministry here at Ablaze Ministries, here with Beyond the Pew to talk to you about what is a covenant, what is God's covenant, and what does that mean for you and your family. As Catholics, we're familiar with the term covenant because whether we realize it or not, it's something we grew up around. In VBS, Sunday school, or even Catholic school, we heard the stories of Abraham and Moses and David, and we heard about God's covenant with them. But most of us, whether we realize it or not, probably think of God's covenant like we think of a contract. See, a contract is an exchange of goods. In a contract, one party says to another party, I will promise you these goods or these services, and you will do the same for me in return. If one of us doesn't meet our end of the bargain, the contract's over. We terminate, we move on, and we find someone else who can fulfill the contract better. So we think our covenant with God is the same way. We think God, as long as I walk this tightrope, God, as long as I stay within these lines, God, as long as I'm good enough, then I've held up my end of the contract and you need to hold up your end of the contract and give me heaven. But this is not what a covenant God is like. And thank God that it isn't. Because if it was, none of us would be able to hold up our end of the bargain. See, a covenant is different than a contract. In a covenant, what's being exchanged is the total self. A covenant is a complete gift of two parties to each other. We see this in vocational covenants, such as marriage and priesthoods. In these covenants, a complete gift of self is given through that promise. And in a valid covenant, it is not dissolvable. And in the Bible, in the Old Testament, in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 36, we see God say this to the nation of Israel, a new heart I will give you and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will remove your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. You shall dwell in the land which I give to your fathers and you shall be my people and I will be your God. It's important to remember that God is speaking this to a nation that has been rebellious, has been disobedient. The nation of Israel did not hold up their end of the contract. So if this was like a contractual love, it would have been over. But God's love is a covenant. Even when Israel strays, God does not love them because of their performance or because of what they do. God loves them because of the promise that he has made to them. When you ask yourself, God, why do you love me? The answer isn't based on anything you do. But many of us carry wombs in our heart. We carry wombs from our past sometimes, whether we realize it or not. Wombs of rejection or needing to perform or times when superiors, siblings, coaches, people you let down made you feel like, well, maybe I'm not loved as much as I thought. And sometimes without even realizing it, we act out of our woundedness towards our friends, towards our family, and towards our children. So in taking this home, I want you to meditate on that scripture. I want you to meditate on that message that God's love for you is a covenant love. God does not love you because of what you've done. God loves you because of who you are, because you are a child of his promise and a child of his covenant. Because sometimes those wounds, if we don't address them, we don't heal them, without even realizing it, we transmit those wounds to others around us. But God wants to heal you of that. And God wants you to know his love is a covenant. The second thing is, tell these stories to your children. The stories I mentioned at the beginning of the video, Abraham, Moses, David, tell these stories, but when you do, Tell it in the context of a father that is keeping his promise, the children that are being disobedient. Because that is a powerful message. God wants you to know and he wants your children to know that they are part of a covenant. And no matter how they fail, his love for them doesn't change. I truly believe that if we hold this covenant to love in our heart, it can be a life-changing message for yourself, but also for your children and for your family. So I hope this message resonates with you, and I hope this message blesses you and blesses your loved ones. Because beyond the pew, we believe that sainthood starts at home.